Hey there, folks. This is Mitch Firestone with Precision Trading Labs in New York City. It is May 31st, 2024, and I'm here to bring you trading levels in the major market indexes uh, for the upcoming week of uh, June 3rd. Uh, we'll take a look at the uh, SPY, uh, the triple Qs, the IWM, as well as the bonds as represented by the, uh, the TLT. Um, before we get going here, uh, the usual uh, disclaimer, uh, Precision Trading Labs, uh, we are not financial advisors nor money managers. Uh, nothing that I'm about to show you is to be construed as investment advice. Uh, everything we do here for our subscribers is for educational and information purposes only and helping them along with their um, journeys to become confident, competent traders. So uh, taking a look here at the SPY, which of course is the ETF of the, uh, the S&P 500, um, we actually had a short week this week because of course the uh, Memorial Day holiday. So we actually had only four trading days uh, this week. So uh, this vertical line here is where uh, this was last week's close. So here are the four trading days this week. And we're actually looking at a two hour chart here, uh, actually 130 minutes. So each candle of course, each day of course, breaks out to uh, exactly three candles uh, doing that. So we can see uh, during the week, uh, it was pretty much a down, down week for most of the week and going into about midday today. And then we had this uh, this nice little reversal right here. So, and you could see we had this massive, uh, massive green candle here. So uh, for the last, though, this thing bottomed out uh, roughly around lunchtime into late, and then into the, into, into the afternoon, uh, we actually had this really nice rally into the close here. So right now, um, in terms of where trading levels are, uh, if we look above, if we actually look above here, we notice that price came up here, um, consolidated, and then right there it kind of dropped out here. If we think of this as the, uh, this base here, um, this is an area where us, where uh, buyers and sellers were pretty much in agreement within this relatively narrow range of about two and a half, about a point and a half here on the S and P. And then all of a sudden, there was there were no nobody was willing to sell here anymore. Uh, it was excuse me, no one was willing to. Um, was willing to buy here anymore. And so price dropped out of here. And what happened was essentially for these trades to have occurred, uh, sellers had to run down the price chart uh, until they encountered willing buyers. And so that's what kind of went on here. Similarly, in this level over here, down below here, um, within this narrow range, uh, buyers and sellers were in agreement, and then we had we had here an exhaustion of sellers. Uh, the sellers disappeared, and then essentially uh, buyers had to run up the price chart until they found willing sellers at higher prices. And if we think of the shares that are required uh, by willing buyers as demand, and if we think of the shares offered by willing sellers as supply, uh, right in here, supply and demand were in balance. Similarly, up here, supply and demand was in balance. And then right here, supply and demand goes out of balance as there's this exhaustion of buyers. And right here, it goes out of balance as there's, there's an exhaustion of sellers. OK. And so as a result, where you had supply and demand here uh, and then there's an exhaustion of sellers, what's left in its wake, there's only demand. OK. And similarly, up here what's left in the wake of this imbalance here is only supply. And, the, and so the theory goes is that when price returns to an area of supply or when price returns to an area of demand, uh, we can expect a reaction. Up here at the area of supply, uh, quite often we will then see a, um, a price a downward price pressure as price gets pushed down from, from a supply zone. Over here, price gets pushed up from an area of demand. And so it when so what we're doing here is we're waiting for a pullback into demand to buy and we're waiting for a rally up into supply in order to short. Okay. And of course one could either buy or sell stock. And of course one could also express a trade out of a supply zone or a demand zone by in the case of a demand zone by buying a call. Or up here, one could of course buy a put. That would be another way of expressing a trade out of this supply zone. Um, also, for further information about this, uh, this whole concept of supply and demand, if you look below this video, you will actually see a link uh, to another video that we had done where we kind of take a deeper dive into this concept.
So at any rate, um, over here, this is where the spy closed here. So a very short distance above here, we have this area of supply here, and this would be an area where one could uh, express a, um, a bearish trade, and again, by either shorting or buying a put. And of course, one could also express a trade up here uh, by, by also selling premium. Uh, one could do a, a bear call uh, vertical credit spread, and one could then collect premium uh, based on this supply zone, okay? So that's the SPY. Uh, if we now take a look at the Qs, and in fact, I'm going to show you uh, something that I laid out here uh, last week on the Qs. And if we take a look over here, this was the uh, the chart that I had actually put up last week uh, with the, about the Qs. And so this is what we were looking at uh, last week. And here is an area of demand. Okay, right here, supply and demand were in balance. Supply. Okay, then there was an, this, I, that exhaustion of sellers that I described. And so... This was a demand zone that, were, that was left in its wake. And so at the time, we were about 3% uh, at, the, at last Friday's last the close, uh, we were at um, basically 3% above where we were, okay? And so if we now flash forward to today, um, and all, what I'll do is I'll just move that over here a bit. And uh, if we now flash forward to today, we can see right here, here is that area of demand uh, that I just showed you over here. Okay, that's that that's that region right here. Okay, and so we can see there it is right there. Okay, and you can see when price pulled back into that pulled back. Okay, we got that nice bounce out of that uh, out of that zone that I highlighted last week. And so a number of our subscribers actually. Uh, was able was able to trade that today. Some people bought calls. Uh, some people just bought uh, bought shares of the shares of the queues. Uh, but the, the people got a nice bullish trade out of this. Um, also, just to let you know, uh, with the queues, uh, the queues are obviously a very expensive share. It's you know four hundred plus uh, uh, dollars a share. Um, but if you take a look at the XLK. Um, ETF, uh, the sector ETF, you'll find that that's about uh, about 40 or 45 percent of the share price, around uh, 215, 220, something in that territory. And more often than not, the XLK, uh, the chart looks very much like the Qs uh, because of the fact that it's the um, uh, the ET, the sector ETF of the tech sector. And so, quite often, uh, the, the the chart, while it's not identical to the Qs, uh, the, as the expression goes, the charts rhyme. So you can oftentimes take a look at the XLK, and you'll it, more or less it's kind of the same trade as the the Qs, and you'll often find that the levels get created uh, on a relative basis, pretty much in the same place. So at any rate, here's where we are now uh, for on the Qs, and so right here, here's an area of supply above, and so we can see now in relation to where we are, uh, where the close was uh, a few minutes ago, um, we're now sitting about one percent below that. So if we get a push up on Monday uh, or at some point early in the week, and if we if 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 price pushes pushes up on the Qs about one percent and gets to this four fifty six area, uh, this would be an area where we could express a uh, a bearish trade. Um, down here, this area of demand, um, this was a solid area of demand. This thing reacted pretty much exactly as we expected. Uh, when price pushes down here again, this level could work, um, but there's the, the, the expression that we have is the first test is best. Um, and so it's quite possible that there, there may still be demand left in here. But having said that, when price returns here, uh, a certain amount of demand gets chewed up here. And so as a result, when it comes back the second time, uh, the level could very well work, but it, but it's definitely lower probability. So in terms of where we are in relation to that, though, uh, the level where we are now um, in relation to, the, to distance wise, we're a little over one and a half percent down. And this is in that this is now what we would consider to be an area of tested uh, demand. It's no longer fresh demand as it was uh, coming into this week. So we kind of designated like that. That's now an area of tested demand. Okay. So the, the, we have an area of tested demand about one and a half percent down. And then, then the next area of, fr of fresh demand is about three and a half percent down. And that's there. And so this is where we would, uh, this would be the highest probability trade uh, to express a, um, 
um, a bullish trade, a, a bullish trade, and again, one could you know buy a call here or just go long on the queues. Uh, so that was the story uh, with the um, with the queues here, and then we could also take a look at the uh, the Russell two thousand. Okay, so in terms of the Russell uh, Russell two thousand, which is of course the uh, the IWM uh, ETF, uh, here's what the chart looked like last week. And last week I had laid out, um, and you can see right here, this was a drop base rally formation. And this is where supply and demand went out of balance. And so the, the, the thought again was when price pulled back here, uh, you would get a bounce. And you can see it actually, there was a very near miss here and price bounced that back here. Uh, but the, the expectation was uh, since it didn't hit here, this was still an entirely fresh level here. And so we were looking for uh, if there was a pullback, this would be where we could express a bullish trade. OK, so at the time uh, we were we were about one percent, one and a half percent down there. And then up here, uh, we we're about a uh, percent away from that on the um, on the supply side. So if we now go to the live chart and take a look at that. Um, here is the uh, the IWM, and so here's the level that I just showed you uh, earlier. Okay, so here's the demand zone below, which is right here. Okay, there's the thing that I just showed you. Here was that near miss, and then you can see price actually drilled in here, and then we got a pop out of here uh, earlier this week. And so that occurred um, basically on uh, Wednesday. So we ended up uh, buying here on Wednesday. It just kind of hung out here, but then the next day we got a pop there. Okay, so, um, and some people got out yesterday, so, and then some people kind of held into today, and they just got out at the end of the, at the, end of the day. Uh, if we look at the terms of our risk reward on this trade, um, this, this was the, uh, our total risk here. There was our entry, here was our stop, and we put the stop up, you know, basically, you know, at, at some distance behind the uh, the back line of the zone. And we use a percentage of ATR to help guide us with that. And so uh, based on that, that would, be, that would have been a one-to-one -one trade and getting out here was a two-to-one trade. And so that's where some of our subscribers uh, got out. So uh, that was, that was a, a second successful uh, trade that we had had uh, based on those levels that I laid out uh, last Friday. So in terms of now where we closed, uh, we're about 1% down off of this, uh, uh, below this uh, supply zone here. And in terms of the, the, another area of fresh demand, um, we're about 4.5% down in terms of the fresh demand level. And of course, this is very similar to the cues of what I just showed you. And so now that's no longer fresh demand, but it's tested demand. And so right there, right there, uh, this is now uh, we we can think of that it is either you know tested demand you know some people might think of this as now support um, and support or tested demand is can stuff definitely work but it, it doesn't work as often as fresh demand okay and so because the fact that nothing has been chewed up and nothing the price has not been back here okay so right now that's about four and a half percent down in terms of fresh demand and in terms of the tested demand zone uh that's about um where are we here sorry that line just moved on me here and then in terms of where our distance from where we are now uh that's about a one and a half percent down so that's a story with the iwm and then lastly we'll finish off uh with the um the tlt so the TLT, of course, are the is the ETF of the longer duration uh, bonds, uh, U.S. bonds, uh, 20, uh, 20 years beyond in duration and, as, and more. So, you know, basically the 20 and the 30 year. So here's where we closed uh, today. So right here we have that rally base drop formation uh, on the two hour chart here. And so right there, that's that's the area where supply and demand Okay, right here uh, in terms of this little pivot there, um, this is where uh, essentially we had the uh, where the, that sudden drop there represents a, uh, a major exhaustion of buyers here. And so uh, this area of supply here, when price gets back here, this would be an area where we could express a, uh, a bearish trade. And again, the bearish trade, of course, would be the, be the, you know, the simple way, of course, would be to short or to buy a put. 
Okay, so right there, there's our entry at 91.33. And then uh, we would then place our stop uh, somewhere, let's say around 91.60 or so. So that would, or maybe 91.55, somewhere in there. So that would represent right here. If it dropped to there, that's a one-to-one -one trade, a two-to-one trade, a three-to-one trade. And of course, we can see this is a relatively narrow zone, uh, but this is exactly where um, this is exactly where the exhaustion of uh, of, sell of buyers occurred. And so what we do is we take the uh, the candle that that designates that that region and that establishes uh, the depth of our zone there. And then we give it a little extra wiggle room uh, for the uh, for the stop out there. So anyway, so there's a uh, about one percent above here is where that area of supply is. And then in terms of an area of demand, uh, right here, this was an area right there. We had that rally base rally formation here. Okay, this is now this is an area of tested uh, demand right here. Okay, so it's no longer fresh demand, and we just talked about that a minute ago. So the next area of fresh demand is right here. Okay, so right here we had a rally base rally formation. Price came back, but it didn't make it all the way back. And so now when price returns here, you can see that 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 the, the TLT has not been back here since this level got created uh, at the end of uh, at the end of May. So that was roughly about a month uh, a month ago. And so when price if, if price returns here at some point this week, uh, this would be the area where we would express a, a bullish trade. So right now we're about three percent above above that area so we would need you know obviously the uh, tlt to fall from about 90 and a half uh down to about 88 so that's about two and a half points on the tlt and that represents a little less than three percent as a percentage of its uh, price so um that's what i got here so thank you very much for the privilege of your time and i will see you next time take care bye-bye